Johnny, it's five minutes before the big hour of five o'clock here on Frantic Friday. We're rocking and rolling and shooting those big 45s out at you here on KROK FM driving home time. Everybody's crowding out of downtown Big D, so let's go to our KROK guy in the sky, Doug Dugan, doing it, doing it in the Power 106 FM K Rock Chopper. Hey, Doug, what's it look like from up there? Hey, big buddy. Things are getting pretty jammed up down there. 75 Central Expressway is backed up all the way to LBJ, and I-35 northbound is packed because everybody who is anybody is headed toward the lake. This is Doug Dugan, and that's the Whirlybird's eye view of the K-Rec Report. Drive carefully, Dallas, and have a... I hope I brought enough food for this weekend. I'm really looking forward to relaxing on the lake. I'm not worried. You always bring enough food for an army. I'm leaving all my troubles at the office. No phone, no work, just a quiet, peaceful weekend at the lake. Paul, what's that? What the hell? Police. <sighs> Paul, call 911. You bet. Call him. This old boy just killed a motorcycle cop. I seen him. Switchboard. Yeah, give me the police, please. Police department. Name, please. Uh, th this is Paul Loftus. What's your location, sir? I'm at Lake Dallas at uh, Kane's Fishing Lodge. Oh, what's the nature of your problem, sir? I think there's been a murder. Captain Pollard, Detective Glorioso. This is Detective Crooks. Division. Are you ready, sir? We're going into division on this, Captain. Shower and shave downtown. It's gonna be a long night. Buckle up for safety, sir. <laughs> sure. You bet. My name is Cold Iron. Barrett Cold Iron. I'm a captain with the Dallas Police Department in charge of their tactical operations lab. Two days ago, I was considered one of the leaders in the field of police robotics. Today, I'm thought of as a modern-day Dr. Frankenstein. My objective was pure enough, to make the streets of the city a little safer, where gangs of punks, dope dealers, and the rest of society's scum could be effectively controlled and hopefully eradicated. A controlled army of police robots could stop the slaughter of the hundreds of policemen who sacrifice their lives every year in the protection of those they serve. But how do you stop a killing machine gone berserk with only a go button and no compassion? This battle may have been lost, but the war continues. There's just too much at stake to give up now. A way must be found to protect society from itself. Still another chance. Maybe it can be done. Just maybe. Sir? Uh, yes, sir. We can gain entry into every classified paper in the tactical operations lab, Dr. Cold Iron. We'd rather get it from you, though. Make no mistake. We will do so in any event. Talk or not. You know that this is an unofficial debriefing. Officially not an arrest questioning. Then please state so for the record, Doctor. Unofficially. Officially. Officially. For the record? Or for the mayor? Or the division commander? Or about 12 other high-crotched federales perched behind a two-way mirror? 
Last Thursday, my life was a hell of a lot simpler. The day started just like any other day. A fresh October morning breeze blew across the ranch. The cattle were coming in for the morning feeding. And the buttery morning sunlight painted a golden glow through the ranch house windows. If I'd known then what was about to happen, I'd have never crawled out of bed. stumps for pasture land has always been a chore. In the past, I've always used nitro or dynamite, but this new primer cord explosive lets me practice my roping at the same time it blows the stumps away. Hmm, guess I better go back to straight nitro. shower stall. No, shaving. You working today, babe? Give me a reason. Money. Hmm. Marry me and I won't need money. Two can live as cheap as one if one doesn't eat. Speaking of which, if you're a good girl and go to work, I'll cook the steaks at your place tonight. The perfect reason. Call me from the lab. I love you. I love you too, Penny. Bye.
Ten years ago, when I founded the Dallas Police Tactical Operations Lab, our objective was to research, develop, and construct the nation's first invincible police force. Even though we've made incredible advancements, sometimes it's hard to tell the boys from the toys. Say, you know, I hope they brought the hydrogenated wheat German desiccated liver this time. You just can't get it anywhere like in L.A. Um, uh, wheat German desiccated liver, sir? Uh, what for? For my handball game, son. Keen reflexes, super endurance. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Don't ask stupid questions. Uh, handball, shoot. <laughs> I got your handball game right here, pal. Twelve o'clock for lunch. Now you be there. I'll be there. Just don't worry. Good morning, about Captain Cold Iron. Good morning. How are you doing? Great. Just like whatever you say. Say, maybe uh, why don't you hit me with those uh, seven digits? Okay. Uh, all right, I'm coming. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Big D and DPD's Tactical Operations Research and Development. I won't bore you with rechewed details, but since we're officially on the record this morning, let me quickly recap our charter. We scientists are like degreed science fiction writers. We're all prognosticators of the future. And since our particular purpose of vision belongs to the creed of law enforcement, we open inroads into tomorrow in ways and means of those who would serve and protect justice and order. As you know, it's all my fault that for the past three and a half years, our public benefactors have channeled funds into this development project. Dr. Brian, Wilson Institute of Hawthorne. Is this what your research has led up to? A tin marionette? Not quite. Another scientist, uh, Dr. Steele from Houston, developed a super technology constructed combat chassis out of an alloy. An unknown alloy, simply given an obscure number. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Carl, also from Wilson. What's your intent in some little known alloy? Is there some good vibration to its molecular tonality you can utilize? Exactly. Watch. Dr. Michael, Raman Love, East-West Test Center. The chassis. How can it animate without gears and motors? I mean, I get around, but I've never seen anything like this. This combat chassis has been issued a prime directive, Doctor. Dr. Allen, Jardin University at Malibu. Are you saying this thing could do anything from aerobics to tai chi? Right, it can do karate to full field combat. Uh, Dr. Bruce, Johnston Lab, Zuma Beach. God only knows this is spectacular, but what exactly are we dealing with here? Molecular memory and learning. All it needs is a spark, a current of electricity as a catalyst, an inducer, simulated brain impulse, in this case, a command. The metal itself has already been taught the aerobic movement by the particular electrical impulse of the induced corresponding command. Then the molecules move the chassis into the remembered posture. The metal itself can learn, remember, and teach itself. It doesn't need motors, gears, and tubes. Just a flat place to stand and a lever that's long enough, and it can move the world. Well, who are we who create such a thing? Heroes and villains? The only difference between a hero and a villain is the amount of compensation they take for their services. At our pay scale, I'd say we're heroes. 
<laughs> what are you planning, high-tech rock and roll to the rescue of civil law and order? You're on my wavelength, and you're right. And I've already wondered if our creation is going to rescue society or destroy it. I think Dr. Frankenstein must have felt the same way. He was full of fine intentions himself, you know. Only he tried to harness death, and we're trying to harness life. Either we control society, or it destroys itself. And next year, same time, same place, if you'll be our guests again, you'll see the product of the next phase of evolution. 25 years from now, if you'll come next fall, what you'll see will be the only thing that stands between humanity and itself. Remember, mankind is bent on genocide, self-extermination. I'll show you the only remedy. Dr. Cold, I have uh, urgent phone call for you in your office. Uh, Division Commander Bugler, priority line one. Bad as usual. <laughs> Worse than that, he's swole up like a poison toad. Hmm. The man hadn't had a decent bowel movement in a week. I told him to lay off that home cooking. Hmm. Man was 39 years old before he discovered gravy wasn't a beverage. to hear your voice. Let's not spar with the social amenities, Cold Iron, and say we did. Now, down to business. Do you know who called me at 5 a.m. this morning? Well, I'll tell you whom, doctor. Our benefactor, your meal ticket. Mr. Free Ride, as you must think of him. Or Graham Reaper, as I think of him. Senator Donald D. Douglas. The man who gave you the shovel you've been digging up graves with, my friend. Do you know what he wanted to know? He wanted a progress report on your project. And do you know what I said? Look, Commander Bugler, Earl, I know what you're going to say. No. No, you don't here, Doctor. You know, I lied to the Senator and said everything was right on schedule. You see, I had to lie to him because from day one, you cut me out of it. You, you hated me. You, you thought I was nothing but a stupid paper jerker, a peasant. Well, I don't know how you're doing. So I said everything is fine, 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 fine. Then he got cross with me, Barrett. Quite cross. And said, no, Commander. Things are ahead of schedule. Way ahead. In fact, we're close to fruition. We're going to have product in 60 days. Product? Well, what the hell are you trying? You know what I told him? I said 60 days is impossible. Maybe 60 months. You know what he called me? What? Private citizen. And do you know why? Why? Because he can make me a private citizen in 60 seconds. Now, why would he do that? For the same reason a dog licked itself, boy, because it can. And because he's got a hold of me in the same place. And do you have any idea why? No, you don't. Because you're a lab jockey and I'm a politician. Well, let me lay it out plain for you, son. The senator found himself a holy grail three and a half years ago. That grail can make him king. Your project, your dream, that's his holy grail. He skimmed millions from here and there and gave it to the mayor. The mayor took a slice and gave it to me. I took my cut and went down through half a dozen middle people, and you got what was left for your great quest. Am I getting through to you, cowboy? Yes, sir. An election's coming up in six months. With product of your research, he'll take public credit, and he'll use it to catapult himself into the White House. So, Doctor, I'm not asking for product. I'm delivering the command. 60 days. And if there isn't product by then? Then the mayor, myself, six other high political figures, and, oh yeah, yourself as well, all go to the state penitentiary for misappropriation of state and federal funds. And your holy grail? Well, that gets turned into a public journal with your name printed on a target at the bottom. It, it, it isn't ready. Four years from now, maybe the prototype, any sooner. You work for me, Cold Iron. You 
get it done. That's about as far as you're gonna stick it, Earl. You may be so crooked you got to screw your head on. But you're not pulling my strings. No, Cold Iron. I'm pulling your plug. You're off the project as of right now. Let me tell you something, mister. You fire me and I'll make more noise than two skeletons making love in a tin coffin, brother. You bastard. Yeah. By accident of birth, Earl. But you, you're a self-made man. I quit. You run the project yourself, and good luck. Who's your second in command? Dr. Howdling, my assistant. Give him the keys and don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. get you down to the uh, range and qualify. It's that time again. What's that, Statum? You want me to go out and shoot targets now? Out to the range? You getting in my face about this, Statum? Right no, now? Is that what you no, want? Huh? No. Uh, forget it. I'll just write it in, sir. No need to bother. Uh, I'll just send over another sharpshooter medal. That's all, sir. Sorry, sir. Thanks. Sorry. What's up, sir? I gotta get out of here. Bugler just jumped down my throat. Why, sir? Because he can. So, sir, what are you doing? I'm giving you the keys. Key, key, keys to what, sir? The Holy Grail, Houtling. Uh, <coughs> uh, priority line, Houtling. Uh, it's a division commander, and it's for you. Investments, Miss Gale, may I help you? Penny. Hi, you. Yeah, hi. Oh, no, don't even talk to me unless you've had a nice day. Take off work. Give me a reason. I quit. Meet you in 20 minutes at Crockett's. Judy, I'm out to lunch. say? Cold iron's fired. I'm project chief now. Huh? <laughs> I got 60 days. Uh, 60 days to what? Well, to deliver product. And, and that's impossible. It, it can't be done. Well, what if, what if you don't deliver? Then you're project chief. Oh. Uh, you, uh, you gonna finish those fries? Just. Yeah.
Natalie, it's not that one. It's the index file. Just shut up, will you? Just shut up and get... Hold it, all right? Now, I... I can't run a sequential circuitry test without the impulse feed chain. Cold Iron, this is your monster. We'll never figure this out. Wait. Willard. Yeah. Punch in all the impulse codes. That'll activate the chain and we can go down to the tank and trace the circuits by hand. What do you say? Yeah, cool. I, well, I, I guess it, it, you know, as long as there's no current in the chain, it's, it's okay, but... I man, keep this room locked until we get back. I mean, my God, if, if somebody Never just... Never mind that. <laughs> What do you think this is, some low-budget sci-fi flick? I mean, what can possibly happen, Willard? Well, uh, you know, for one I thing, said, uh, never oh, mind oh, that. That's oh, negative thinking. Uh, Think positive. Uh, yeah, well, I think we're positively crazy for even trying this. Uh, jeepers. Uh, Adling. Adling. All we have to do is crank it up for the media. I mean, let it spin across the room for the cameras. We've got 60 days, and we've assisted Cold Iron a dozen times. I just know it. I'm going to end up Project Chief. Slide me them seven digits. The phone number, Mama. You got to give up the phone number. <laughs> hey, baby, look. Here I'm my bad self up in your face. You looking everywhere but here. You think you bad or something? Another white supremacist? going too far. <laughs> Another pale face grinding his heel in the poor Indian's face. I thank God my sainted ancestors have gone off to the happy hunting grounds and ain't around to see this. This <laughs> racism. You're not an Indian. Look at these cheekbones, baby. Either I'm an Indian or I'm a sissy. <laughs> and well, since uh, I must be an Indian. Don't you like have some mopping to do? Yo, love, I'm proof to you I'm an Indian. Instant Indian lore. My people, the Red Hand Apache, we had a custom. It's called the Blood Eagle. When a war chief captures an enemy warrior that he really respects, he lets him choose the way he wants to be executed. Oh, gross. Quit it. Go somewhere else. <laughs> Yo, Betty, listen. I learned this stuff. You see, if that warrior wants to prove how brave he really was, he'd ask to die by the Blood Eagle. OK, I'll ask. Gross me out. What, what is the blood eagle? <laughs> Check it out. Well, the warrior, he lays on the ground, and they tie ropes to his arms and his legs. And the other ends of the ropes, they tie to four different horses. And they slap the horses on the behind, and they run in four different directions. And well, the guy, you know. <laughs> that's sickening. That's it. <laughs> OK, that's cool. Because <laughs> like I said, once you go red, <laughs> you never get out of bed. My tunes. Gots to have my tunes. Hey, what up, dude? Looks cool as blue steel to me. Three dollars and ninety-nine cents worth of battery. Shot in the behind. Somebody owe me three dollars and ninety-nine cents. This mad doctor place got some trouble coming from me. <laughs> you don't mess around with we the people. When we the people get pissed off. saw the charcoal last week. I want to get out of these clothes and I'd hate to go back out. Mm. Lady, you got some bargaining position. 
I'll marinate the meat and make the salad if uh, you go to the mini mart. Hmm. I reckon you got a bargain. <laughs> sure, we're partners. <laughs> oh, yuck. Never a black eye around when you got a steak. Be right back. <laughs> okay, bye. Willard. Oh, Willard! Huh? Huh? Right. Willard, we have an impulse feed coming in on the chain. Where's it coming from? Where's it coming from? Worse than that, where's it going to? Change a dollar? Get out of my face, asshole. Look, Dirtwad. I'm gonna walk back over to my car. I'm gonna call your license into the cops. But if you can give me change for a dollar, that's gonna give you about 30 extra seconds before I call you in. Comprende, bro? Watch me blow her brains up and splatter all over the ground. Now, what are you gonna do? You gonna stop me? All you got is a newspaper. I got more than the newspaper. And you get to guess what it is. Who's she got? Get pass up! Absolutely. Me too, hon. In a few minutes. I know. Sure. See ya. Captain. Just fill in all the right places, and I'll sign it for you. Well, since you're going to the trouble, so why don't you go on home? Thanks a lot, Moki. I really appreciate your covering for me. It's been a long day. It just doesn't want to seem to end. Here you go. Say, don't use that next time. Ambulance boys don't like picking up bodies with a pooper scooper. I don't like it even more. Thanks again. No problem. So, Captain. Don't you know you've done the right thing? But you ain't no street cop, are you? Don't you go back to your nice little laboratory and stay there? You're right, Bob. You let us boys out of the streets. Out of the test tubes, huh? <laughs> sure. 
Because if I don't handle the test tubes, the streets are going to eat you boys alive. <laughs> Teeth, hair, and eyeballs. I don't get it. Every, everything with a with a battery pack is a it's an operative. Yeah, I know. All the batteries and the storage generators and the energy traps, man, they're empty. They're all drained. What's going on? You don't think? Oh no, 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 no. I don't want to think. No. So what? How you done, bro? Hmm. He looks okay to me. Come on, we've got lots of work to do. One of these days, I'm going to quit this job. Excuse me. Get you to sign up for the policeman's ball? Hey, what's the matter with you, buddy? Get your pecker caught in the plumbing this morning? I ought to jack you up. Spitting, polished, academy snot. God save us all. Think drained all the energy packs down in the vault. Oh, geez, I don't know. I, you know what I thought, but well, nothing was out of place. We might as well shut everything down and pull the plug in the vault. We wouldn't want some sort of accident. <laughs> yeah, I got the feeling this is how Terminator got started. What do you mean? Go to what work? <laughs> I, all you've ever done is go to school. And there aren't many jobs where you can go to class, uh, take tests, and go to frat parties. Well, what are you saying? Just because I'm getting married, my life is over before it even starts? Of course not, Sonny. Hey, 
Uh, it's just embarrassing for a guy to have his wife work. Thank you. Don't mention. Better not. You know what it is? It's the wedding. I mean, that's what's wrong with this. Look, I want a wedding. Okay, just because you've already gone through with it doesn't mean that I've... It's a barbaric in. ritual. Hey, the sacrificial virgin. Hey, it's heathen. It's sweet. It's dragging us out, Sony. Look, it took three weeks to get this shower together tonight. And look at you. You look like you got both eyes coming out of the same hole. I'm going to work after the honeymoon. Okay, I'll make you a deal, okay? Hey. Hey, what? Elope with me tonight? Huh? And, uh... I'll help you get a job after the honeymoon. Oh, it's 2 a.m., I'm starving. You ate at the shower. That was five hours ago. Hey, you want to go to the IHOP? Huh? I, I got to check the tranny anyway. You were going to lose 10 pounds before the wedding. Five pounds, Sony. Five! Okay, honey, it's a police officer. Police officer? Just we're out of town? Excuse me, officer. I was just telling my girlfriend here, you guys are really cleaning up the undesirables in this neighborhood. You crossed the force, a restricted grid at an illegal speed. You guys are tough. In fact, uh, I'm willing to bet you uh, 20 bucks that you're going to give me a ticket. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey, hey! be a mistake. This can't be right. I gotta talk. I gotta talk. I gotta talk this thing over.
Captain Cold Iron, my beeper. Hello, Captain Cold Iron. This is Detective Sergeant John Mango. Sir, we've got a homicide. Sheriff's Department found a police name tag in the victim's hand. We fed the name into the computer, and it came up. Tactical Operations Lab, Captain J.B. Cold Iron, 0222. Can you give us some information, sir? Sergeant Mango, sit on this. Take no action. Affirmative? That's affirmative. Man, Beach. Give me the sheriff of highway patrol. Sure. Sony. Sonia R. Garen, look. You've got to help me. There's been a murder. A motorcycle patrolman has tried to kill me next. on I-20 West. Their exit, 643, but I can't stay here. Ma'am, you have got to stay there. We're not allowed to move, but I can get word to the Dallas Police Department. They're on this. Uh, this is one of theirs. Look, you don't understand. He is behind me out there. I can't stay here. I have got to go. All right, but you just tell us which road and which direction. State Road 919. South. Impossible.
Willard, Cold Iron. What'd you do with Rotor after we programmed in Prime Directive? Uh, Dr. Cold Iron, uh, well, uh, sir, gee, uh, well, his, his last orders were, uh, why, is there something wrong, sir? What did you do after I left? Oh, well, nothing much. We, uh, we just tried to test. What happened? Uh, well, I don't know, really. We, we fouled up the test activation sequence, then we went down to do a hand search on the relay wires, and when we came back, all the power packs in the room were drained. Drained? Yeah, well, drained. What drained them? <laughs> now, sir, I, I know what you're thinking. I mean, I, I looked personally, it was still there. You looked in the tank, but you didn't check the suspension readout. Oh, uh, no, why? Rotor's out. I see. Well, sir, I'd like to take this opportunity to resign my position in the company and... <laughs> This is Captain Cold Iron calling Detective Mango, priority. Captain Cold Iron, John Mango, glad you called. I found out we got a rogue cop out there. Yes, sir. Deputy Sheriff Dean just called from west of town. A Sonia R. Garin called him from the road. She said a motorcycle patrolman shot her fiance and is after her now. What'd he tell her? To keep moving until DPD got to her. Good. Nobody move till you hear from me. Cold Iron. Damn it, Cold Iron, what do you want? You got your wish. 59 days soon. I just hope you can handle it. What are you raving about, man? You want a product? You got product. It's already killed once. What? Rotor. The men you put in charge, they activated it. It went out, put itself on active duty. Its last program was Prime Directive. Shut up. Prime Directive in 25, 50 years from now. Prime Directive to our rotor unit is judge and execute. It stops felons, judges the crime, and executes sentence. Justice served, C-O-D. Not another word. You call the senator and you tell him rotor walked through a busload of nuns to get to a jaywalker. With malice towards no one, it won't stop. It wasn't ready. Its brain functions are incomplete. It can't think twice, can't reason, can't change its prime directive. It's like a chainsaw set on frappe. If, Cold Iron, you've had one of your experiments go out of control, well, I suggest you reconsider your resignation and save your own ass before the senator finds out. All right, Bugler. I'll go get him. And when I bring him back, I'm ramming him right down City Hall's throat. Rotor is not my problem. You're right, Bugler. I'm your problem. Sorry about the TV. I we gotta keep it on until after the homecoming. Can I get you some hot coffee? Coffee. Yeah, sure. Cream and sugar with that, ma'am. Captain Cold Iron, call in Detective Mango. Emergency. John Mango. Sonia Garin. Where is she? I'm gonna bring her in. Alone.
Hey, come on over here. Yeah, come on. Right down there. Go through that little trap door right there. Right there, honey. Hey, you. Pull that trigger and they're gonna be picking up little bitty pieces of blue pig shit all over the parking lot. Son of a bitch! Breaker, Breaker, Sonia Garen, come in. Come in, Sonia. Who is this? Sonia Garen, Blue 86 Impulse. Yeah, yeah, who is this? Are you all right, Sonia? Yes. This is Captain Baron Coldiron. I just pulled into the gas station in the Isuzu Trooper. I've been trying to find you before, before the motorcycle cop caught up to you. Oh, God! Eat this, you are my son of a bitch! What's happening? What's going on? Sonia, he's after you. I, th I think I crippled him. At least he's right. Listen to me. The cop's name is Ruger. He's gone renegade. Keep moving. Stop for help. Just keep moving. I'm going for help. I'll be gone, I don't know, a few hours. Can you keep moving until I get back? I have to stop him and you have to be the bait. Can you do it? Yeah. Maybe. Help me, Sonia. Help me help you. This thing, Rotor, is on a rampage. If he stays after you, he won't go off on a killing spree. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You said thing? Hey, what do you mean? Answer me! Meet me. Do you know Lake Dallas? Any of the fishing camps out there? I don't know any of the fishing camps. I know some of the roads up to the fishing camps. Good. There's a big sign that says Kane's Fishing Lodge. On the left, yeah. Okay, now listen close. 
Meet me there at 4 p.m. Can you do it? Get this son of a bitch away from me, Captain. Hang on, Sonia. I'd like to make a call to Houston, Texas, area code 713. Welcome to the machine. Leave the name, leave the number, if you know what's good for you. If this is Dr. Corin Steele, I'm Barrett Coldiron. It's 5.45 a.m. We've never met, but I need you. I waited the American Airlines ticket counter. got to meet like this, Dr. Steele. I feel like old friends meeting again. You know, we got to know each other's papers and mathematics pretty well. Your designs for the combat chassis are the most brilliant I've ever seen. It was nothing without your own brain matrix. He's out there. We made him, and he's doing what we made him for. In science, there's no room for human error. There's no place for it in law. We built the perfect law, man. The one who could walk into the streets of blood, the cities of fire, the, the edge of destruction, and function perfectly, again and again. And already, look what's happened. Human error. Now I've got to bring him back in. You know it's impossible, don't you? Yeah, maybe. Except for this. The deactivation key? Come on. Yeah, well... Maybe, like you said, impossible, but let me ask you something, Steele. Can we bring him in? You got the key.
I've done my homework already. Let me ask you something. Can he be stopped? I don't know. When I stack them, they stay stacked. Yes. Thank you for calling the Lincoln Hotel. Good morning. Welcome to the Lincoln Hotel. May I check for your reservation? Steel. C.R. Steel. We're not knocking over tin cans here. This is reality. Dr. Steele, yes, room 222. Great. What? That's his badge number. Superstitious, huh? Could I have another room? There's no sense tempting reality too darn much. Remember what I said at Rotor's christening? First prototype of a future battalion. On the battlefield highways of the future, he'll be the judge, jury, and executioner. Now I've got to wonder, were we playing God, breathing life into our artificial Adam, or have we lost sight of paradise? What was it Milton said? Did I request thee, maker, for my clay to mold me man? Did I solicit thee from darkness to promote me? Is it his fault he is what he is, or is it ours? Well, either way, he's out there now, 25 years too soon. Let's go get him. Clear the way, please. Clear the way. We're cut off. No backing, no backup. I don't know what's happening, except for this. I know he's not on an ongoing program. Something in the molecular memory of the chassis alloy. It's affecting the brain matrix. How so? He's programming himself. He's got more potential than we ever dreamed. Oh, God. The brain matrix. It's modeled after your own lower brain functions, without mm -hmm. the higher functions to control mm. them. A brain without a heart, a conscious without recognition, a will without a soul. If I miss, you'll be fighting your own base instincts. To combat pure will, you'll have to use pure illogic. What do you mean? You will have to allow yourself to fail. Use your failure against him. Your failure is his failure. Your weakness is his weakness. Then, only then can you do something. Great, uh, except I don't know what any of that means. Let's hope you never have to find out. Remember, you're the brains, I'm just the brawn. Sure. Pick him up now and then on the trace monitor. Probably when he's having power surges. He's draining constantly. I got a theory. What if I force his substructure plates apart? If you got that close, you could use the key. If I got that close, finding the keyhole would be the last thing on my mind. Come on, what if? He'd cause a power surge. His inner electrical current would surge to the surface, draw off. Right there, you'd get the full charge. What if I got that close? Could work but don't get that close. Here's the story. 
The girl, Sonia Guerin, somehow got in his way. I don't know, ran a stop sign or something. Rotor killed her boyfriend. She ran. The robot is programmed to chase. I caught up to her last night. She's okay, she's resourceful. Been driving ever since, keeping him occupied tracking her. My God, what have you done? I wish I knew. country from here. You don't happen to know any good Indian trackers, do you? Used to spend every summer on the Indian reservation. Well, I do. <laughs> I'm like a cemetery. I'll take anybody. Step in the hill. Okay. Is it his? Well, it ain't Pee Wee Herman's. Concludes the drill. That's all for today.
trooper. Get ready to back it off and take out the slack. Come on, you monster. What's the matter? Using my brain to think with? You think I'd set you up? Enough! Do you understand? I said no more! Enough! No more! time to figure out what this means to each one of us. I'm gonna leave my report in my office. After that, I got a ranch, I got a horse, I got a pretty girl. And like you, I got a future. One day at a time. <laughs> Justice Served, C-O-D. To Mr. Brett Coldiron, Oxford University, Science Department. Dear Brett, we are sorry to inform you of the sudden and tragic death of your uncle, Barrett C. Coldiron. Heroically, he gave his life in the line of duty. As you are his only heir, his papers and personal effects will be forwarded to you. Again, we deeply regret the loss of your uncle and share your grief. Sincere condolences, Earl G. Bugler, Division Commander, Dallas Police Department. The Journal of Brett Coldiron, 11-13-87. Six weeks later, I received my late uncle's journals along with a substantial cash inheritance. In his last notes about the rotor incident, my uncle wrote, I hope we'll learn not to fear our technologies, but to fear the people who use them. I personally feel that when he created the perfect police combat unit, he deleted the very special quality law enforcement was founded on, human mercy. <laughs>